it. So that bottom piece will only be 30. So if this is uh, 16, 30 is probably approximately like that. So I can already say that's where the bottom part will fit, finish. And the top part finishes higher than the wheel. So whatever the wheel is in the end, I can just draw the top part in here. Okay, so you could finish that if you want, but like I say, you can also just finish the rest and then fill in that part. So now I know from this point up to the other side of this housing, I have 88. And somewhere in between that, I need to have my bush and my wheel. And my bush and my wheel is 86. So there's a millimeter gap on either side that I need to indicate. Okay, so if I look at the bush um, and the wheel in relation to this pin, now I have six, I've placed the housing on that six. So what space do I have left here? Up to my first lubrication hole, if I take the six off the 50, I have 44. Okay, and then there's two extra added for this, so it's 46. And then I have a lot more space. So you need to try and figure out where is this bush going to lie. If I look at my overall length here, it's 120. Okay, if I take the 6 off that 120, I'm at 114. And if I take this 25 off from this side, so you want to take the 25 off, so you know we're basically trying to determine what this space looks like. Okay, so taking the 25 off, I'm left with 89. Okay, so 89 here gives me a space that I have. And how big is this gap between the, the housing? It's 88, which means that slightly before the threading, my housing will end. Okay, so that's important that when you draw that in, you recognize that slightly before this threading ends, my housing will end. So this is where the other part of my housing will be. And that will also be six, both sides are six. So I can already make just a small indication of where my housing will finish. And in between, I will have my bush and my wheel. So because I know it's 88, the bush and the wheel is 86, and the bush just fits in, it's a normal bush. How high is it? So is it higher than this, this part? Um, and for that, we have to look at how big those parts are. So I have 30 on the outside. If I look at this, I have 30 for this total height. So what is the total diameter of this? It's 22. So it's not as high as that pinhead. So it's slightly lower than the pinhead. And it finishes just before the housing because I know it's slightly smaller than the housing. And already I fill in my cross hatching here. Remember the cross hatching is not small crosses, but first hatching in one direction and then hatching in the opposite direction. And I know the bush and the pin fits exactly on top of each other because the diameters are exactly the same. Okay, next part is the wheel. I know how the wheel looks. I know the wheel and the bush fits exactly aligned with each other. I know the wheel has to be slightly lower than this part of the housing. So I just redraw what I see, given on the question. And remember this is slightly different, so pay close attention to how this looks. So you're redrawing exactly what you're seeing on your question paper. Okay, so on both sides, Okay, and your proportions are correct. Remember, we're not using rulers. It's a freehand sketch. So you want to be mindful of your proportions. And we can section this component. Okay. And there we have the wheel on top of that. Now, if we look at the rest of this assembly, from this side, if I'm pushing the pin, it's fixed against this part. But if I push the pin in this direction, I can actually push it all the way through because of this. There's nothing fixing this end. 
So what can I use to fix this end? There is no indication of anything special, like a cast nut or anything. And here I can add a washer if I want, but they don't necessarily ask for that, so you can either do it or you can leave it out. But let's just for interest sake say we add a washer. Remember the washer is wider than the, the hole. So first we'll have the washer sitting on top. And then on top of the washer, we can just add a normal nut. Okay, remember you will have your um, pencil, so you'll be able to erase and make sure that that's a clean, neat drawing. So just to show you how that will look, we will have the washer. On top of the washer, we will have our nut and a piece of this sticking out with its threading. And then that goes into your... So there's still threading here for this part that's coming through. And you have the component there. Okay, so that will be the cleaned up version. So just make sure when you are erasing that you leave the correct lines. Very important here that we have these small gaps on either side. That indicates that that wheel assembly is smaller than the gap between the, the two parts. Now the housing is just the same on both sides. So you can just put the housing here. And that will be the same on both sides. And this is the part, the right-hand section view drawing of this assembly. So typically they only ask for one section view and then a normal outside view, but in our case they asked for a partial section to show what's happening with the bearings at the top. So now that we know that we have this part complete, so if we look at our schematic, we've now completed this part. The second part that we want to do is this. So the outside part is fairly easy because we know how this part will look. It will just be this outside part. On top of that you'll have the detail of the grease nipple. You'll have the wheel detail coming in. But the thing that we don't know is how this top part looks. And that's what we want to spend time with now. Okay, so let's go back to our drawings of the different components. If we look at this, we've now used this component. We've used the wheel, we've used the bush, and we've used the housing. Okay, what haven't we used? There are two components here and the ball bearing that we haven't actually used. And we haven't looked at how they connect to each other. And finally, how they connect to this. Because if the ball bearing is the assembly that's in partial view here at the top, how do these components all combine into this piece? So again, what we do is we look at the specific dimensions that are given to us. Okay, so let's look at the ball bearing is given as eight millimeters. Okay. Then we have these two flat but circular components. So let's look at what the detail of this is. What we can see is there's small little holes on this side, as well as small little holes here. Okay, so these small little indents, and they are given as diameter 8, these small indents, which is the same as the ball bearing. So remember when you have a bearing, we have two sides of a bearing, and we have the balls in the center. And because the one side and the top side pushes down on the ball, both of these will have to have the same diameter. So it already looks like these two can be two plate-like components that push down on this ball bearing to close it off. So these ball bearings aren't exposed to, to the outside to collect any dust. Okay, what else do we know? We know the distance between the center point here and the ball bearing is 35. And we know the distance between the center here and the ball bearing is 40. Okay, what is happening in terms of the center part? Like where does that fit? Do they fit together? If we look at the hole that we have here, we see it's a diameter 11. And if we look at the hole here, it's a threaded part that's M10, which means diameter 10, but with threading, M10. Okay, so these two could coincide. We have a bigger hole here, 11, and we have 10 here, but it does mean that we can put something through one of them and bolt into or screw into the bottom part. Now, if these two combine to the housing, how will they combine to the housing? If we look at the, the hole we have here in the housing, we see that it's diameter 30. 
how does that line up with anything that we have here? We don't have a diameter 30 in this one, but here we have a diameter 28. So there's a thick part here that's 28, which could fit through a hole that's 30. Okay, and what do we have on this housing here? If we look at the housing, we see again diameter 8, and we see distance from the center 40. So remember we've had that before, distance from the center is 40. And we have at the bottom, distance from the center is 35. Okay, so now we understand that from the bottom, I'll have this part connected to this housing with the ball bearing inside. And from the top part, I'll have this part of the housing with the ball bearing between these two because there's a 40 millimeter gap. How we connect them is not quite clear yet, but we know these two will be fixed together and that they have a smaller hole with threading that's M10. So there is potential for that to, to coincide. But let's start small. Let's start by what we have. We know these three are combined together, but once we start drawing, it might be easier for us to understand what we're actually seeing. So let's redraw this part. And I'm going to redraw it quite big because I'm not going to redraw this whole part with the wheel. I'm just going to redraw this top section. So if I'm drawing this top part, what I see here, the detail when I cut through, is I can see this. There's a gap and then straight part. And at the bottom, I have something similar. Gap and then a straight part. Then I have a hole here in the middle. And exactly the same is happening.